All right, welcome back to Flag of Socks, the podcast, episode 159. Today on the show, are illegals registering to vote in crucial swing states? We're going to explain. Then we have a backwards and upside down section of housekeeping that is going to absolutely blow your mind. In Cringe of the Week, we have Botox boys and more bearded ladies. In Urban Decay, everyone is blaming white people for non-white people things. And last but not least, we are going to say our final goodbyes before the EMP eclipse comes next week and the locusts take over. Smart. All this and more, it's Flagus Talks, the podcast, episode 159, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, louder than but at the same time, words, words speak louder than actions because, because, because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very, Very cool. cool. Very cool. Fuck the podcast featuring Richard Bradbury. All right, one for one on the intro as always. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our very based show watcher friends over at Farmer Bill's Provision. Now, as you know, as viewers of the show, the bad guys are constantly trying to poison our food. They add seed oils and preservatives that make us fat, toxify our cells, and lower our testosterone. That's the goal. So now that we know this, it's on us to replace our pantry and our snack cabinets with really high quality snacks that are not gonna let them do that. And that's where Farmer Bill's Provisions comes in. Farmer Bill's is aware of the attempted poisoning and that's why they have produced what I call the Wagyu of beef jerky. This stuff is better than any jerky you've ever had or any of that crap they sell in the gas station. This is way different. The pieces are softer and fattier the flavors are fantastic and it tastes so, so good and it's great for you. All of Farmer Bill's products are soy-free, preservative-free, seed oil-free, grass-fed and finished with zero fillers. And like we said, Farmer Bill himself is a show watcher. So if he supports us, it's on us to support him right back. Farmer Bill's also just launched Thick Billies which is the healthier, better version of Slim Jims, pretty much. So do what's best for yourself and your family. Replace your pantry with healthier alternatives from Farmer Bill's Provisions. Use code FLECUS20 at checkout for 20% off your entire order. And if you send me a screenshot showing me that you placed an order and another screenshot showing me that you follow Farmer Bill on Instagram, I will follow you back on the social media of your choice. The link is in the description for Farmer Bill's Provisions. Make sure you use Fleckus20 at checkout for that 20% off. The people over at Farmer Bill's are show watchers and they are the absolute best when it comes to cutting out the toxins from our snacks and replacing them with something good. Link is in the description. Now let's get into housekeeping. Farmer Bill's Provisions, the perfect protein snack. All right. Thank you to Farmer Bill's. Thank you, Farmer Bill. Very based. We Very love Farmer food. Bill. Yeah, he's the best. And a crucial thing when you are making improvements health-wise is to swap out old unhealthy things for new healthy things. And that's what we did with Farmer Bill. We swapped it out. It's one of our go-to snacks. And let's just say, you don't look like this. The results <laughs> speak for themselves. <laughs> let's just say we're on our way to the results. <laughs> yeah. And we'll show you in a few months what it looks like. This yeah. is what Farmer Bills will turn you into. If the Eclipse MP cockroach or <laughs> cicada doesn't take us out. Yeah, we should get uh, a couple cheat meals in before the bomb goes off or whatever. Oh, yeah. Farmer <laughs> Bills is good, but you're already thinking about cheat meals. Great. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. We have a very good show today, a very packed housekeeping, a huge urban, great episode. One of my favorite scripts we've ever put together. And I'm not just saying that. All right. Um, on Tuesday, we talked about the time traveler. Yeah. And Big John. And then it kind of happened. Yeah, but, but not fully. Let's embrace debate here because I don't think, personally, me, Rat Boy, doesn't think a time traveler could get something kind of right. I agree with that. It has to be dead on. Unless there's a, some sort of butterfly effect. He changed it and the information changed. Or uh, the White Hats helped and took over and slid the earthquake away from San Fran to Taiwan. Yeah, but there was a Pacific Ocean earthquake slash tsunami thing. Yeah. So kind of close. Close. Close, but not fully there. Not enough to say the time traveler got it right. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this. I tried to get odds from Richard Rapboy <laughs> on San Francisco getting fully demolished in the next 24 hours. 
and he gave me a hundred to one odds. I had money in my hand, and I was like, "Oh, can I just get some odds on San Fran going down?" Yeah, hundred to one. He's so holding what? five dollars in his hand. I can't have a five hundred k liability out there, so I give him a hundred to one just to shut him up. A hundred to one. So what? Every hundred days, San Francisco dies. That's not how the probabilities work, but yeah, close enough. Close enough. Yeah. So hundred to one. That's that's the worst bookie ever. I didn't want the. Hey, find someone else to take your San Francisco wiped off the earth action. I'm glad I didn't do it because it didn't happen. I know. And I'm also glad it didn't happen because I would never want that to happen. Of course. Um, Let's get into some of our conspiracy stuff. We have some interesting things coming before the eclipse. There was a meteor shower a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, Yeah, this was posted all online. Looks kind of crazy. It could be the Palladians arriving. I don't know what that means. Hopefully not the greys, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Again, (laughs) again, I don't know what that means. Oh, man. Um, So, yeah, this is interesting. The sky is opening up. Uh, We have an eclipse coming. The bugs are coming out. CERN is doing a bunch of stuff. We're getting the particle collider going. Portals and realms are being opened and altered. Uh, We actually found this list on Twitter. Here's everything happening April 8th. Can you give that a read, please? Rare solar eclipse, cosmic explosion, devil comet. CERN is being turned on for the first time since 2022. Allegedly, states are preparing for state of emergency and deploying National Guards. NASA launching three rockets at the eclipse to study it. Uh, NASA launching Project Serpent Deity. I don't like the sound of that one. Bible prophetic signs to repent. Eclipse will awaken two broods of locusts that have not been awake together since 200 years. Yeah, so lots to look forward to. Who wrote that? What I found it on Twitter. It right. rings true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but all those things are true. Like the serpent deity uh, NASA thing, that's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I also saw some schizo post on Twitter that said if an EMP went off and we didn't have power in the United States, 70 to 90% of the United States would die. What, for medicine, not having medicine? Or just not, not, having having, not being prepared, the food runs out, everything gets ugly quick. Uh, but I think show watchers are in that top 10%. Yeah, some of them. Some we, of you. We make it through. Mm-hmm. That's why you got to stuck up in farmer bills. All right. <laughs> so you can eat it and not be um, dead. Not, yeah, not die. Not be dead. Uh, we had a bird flu outbreak that's kind of happening now. Yeah, the uh, largest egg U.S. fresh egg producer halted production at a Texas plant after bird flu found in chickens. Uh, they culled a lot of the hens and apparent, approximately 1.6 million laying hens and 337,000 pullets. About 3.7% of its total flock were destroyed after the infection. I think it went to some cows, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know that. So bird flu, um, I think with this situation, it's like a good way for them to attack what's left of like local farming, okay. which is their goal. Um, just kind of get the remaining smart people who eat local and organic and blame them too. So mm-hmm. if this thing spreads, they can kind of blame the people who are like the green people who eat good and eat local. Uh, and then also it's a good uh, way for them to get to their end goal of like consolidating all of agriculture, animal agriculture into, into like, like five companies, into or... five companies. Tyson's not going to close down. Yeah. You the... know, eating out the crap out of the bag is not going to stop all mm-hmm. the stuff added to it, all the hormones that's going to continue. But if you're a local farmer uh, raising cattle or chickens, I bet that's who they're kind of going to try and target. All right. So I just kind of keep that in mind. Fair prediction. Fair. All right. Let's move on. Uh, Newsmax, yeah. you know, right wing Newsmax. Of course. Not really our guys anymore. Uh, Newsmax posted a tweet that they deleted um, calling Trump out for using the term animals yeah. uh, on uh, illegals. He, was, he called the people who killed Lake and Riley animals. And then Newsmax said, like, Trump is degrading, Ill- uh, is degrading migrants and stuff like that. And even still, if Trump is degrading migrants, it's like, you know, don't we, don't, aren't we allowed a little bit of de- degradation from a full-on invasion of 50 million people? Yeah. Are we, even still, if Trump did say animals, I'm not even mad. I'm yeah. more mad about the invasion than I am about words. Actions speak louder than words, right? Yeah. That's a exactly. tenant of the show. Yeah. So, I mean, even even if it was. But, yeah, that was weird out of Newsmax. And they deleted it and said it was like a low-level staffer or yeah, something. Yeah, they blamed it on a low-level staffer. That's like us blaming the fake intern. Low level staffer, fake intern. It's all the same thing. It's just like somebody <laughs> fucked up, right? It's good to see that no matter what level you get to. I know. Whenever even, you mess up, you just blame a made up person. I know. It's it's literally the life hack. Um, and then Newsmax, keep in mind, also said the election wasn't stolen. Mm. 
a while back and recently. Yeah. So it's good to kind of weed people out, let them show their cards before we need them and get let down in real time in an important situation. Let's kind of expose people now, find out who's really on our side and who's not, and then let's just kind of take that information and move forward and not trust Newsmax. And that's this is what happened with Ben Shapiro, too. I saw a clip about Ben Shapiro talking about the election, mm -hmm. and he goes, well, I don't think the election was stolen. I mean, there were irregularities, uh, especially when it comes to voting, and many of those were illegal when it comes to, like, signature verification and extending deadlines for accepting mail-in votes. Yeah. Georgia I, having all the ballots that weren't folded or didn't look like they'd been sent in the mail. They'd just been printed off, right? So, yeah. And now they're destroyed. And now they're destroyed. And he said that. And he goes, but that being said, I don't think the election was stolen. But it was like, finessed. It was, <laughs> it was some sort of derivative of stolen that doesn't yeah. really make that we don't have a word for it yet. It's like, well, what was it? Because if it was illegal to not check signatures and verify signatures, and then you didn't do that, and then you ran all those votes and counted them as, as legal standing votes... Doesn't that mess up an election? Yeah, and even the left themselves, remember that huge article, how the left fortified the election? Mm -hmm. So fortified is like one end of the spectrum. Stolen is here, and then Ben Shapiro's trying to find that middle ground, apparently. I don't know. It's like, yeah, I don't think it was stolen. They broke the law when it comes to mail-in votes, but I don't think it was stolen. Yeah. So it's like, then what was it? Yeah. It was New very, word needs to be invented. Yeah, very confusing for me. All right, let's move on. We have an update out of Ukraine. There's an article that came out and says, Trump proofing weapons for Ukraine. Allies consider moving arms group into NATO. Yeah, officials are expected to discuss gradually moving the organization called the Ukraine's Defense Contact Group in, into the alliance's control. And then Secretary Blinken just recently spoke about uh, it, admitting Ukraine into NATO, which mm. means like any ongoing conflict, all the NATO countries need to fight with them. There's so, World War Three right there. So it's escalating. A vote for Biden is a vote for World War Three. But yeah, fortifying the election. And now we're Trump proofing weapons to Ukraine. So the president, if he gets elected, he can't stop the endless war. It's so bad. And yeah. obviously in Ukraine, they've already killed like generations of men. Yeah. Um, but now if Trump comes back, he, he might want to stop that. So they're not going to let him. Not which great. Is great news. Uh, and, and I think the China and Taiwan's about to pop off too. And I think that obviously Joe Biden. Remember, he was uh, Joe Biden was bribed by China. Mm -hmm. China and Joe. China Joe. That was like what everyone knew going into the 2020 election. That was like his weak spot, his vulnerability. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the two that, places Hunter Biden made money: China and Ukraine. And it's like, oh, we're already in one. Yeah, here we are. So where's number two? So it makes you think that if China's going to make a move on Taiwan, it's probably going to be before the election in case Trump gets elected. Uh, and then that might have been part of the deal. You know, forget politics. It's bigger than politics. Joe Biden, while you're in there, I'm going to take Taiwan. And that's what China needs. And that's what the payoffs are for. And you got to kind of just let it happen. So I think that's what's coming. Yeah. And that can kind of be World War Three, too. You have China, Taiwan, Ukraine, Russia, Middle East, did you uh, think Israel. World War, yeah. Did you think World War Three was going to just have one front? <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be three fronts at least. Yeah, exactly. So let's move on. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, he was in the news this week. He was saying how Japan is so nice compared to the U.S. Traveling to Japan, I realized that this place, this USA we're always chanting about, is a filthy and disgusting country. <laughs> the whole country is Disneyland, and we're living at Six Flags. Damn, Jimmy, if only there was something we could do. Yeah, if only we could control who was here and kind of have standards and not just do the left's bidding the entire time. Yeah. And well, I mean, we should probably take a note out of Japan's book. What do they do with all their Haitian cannibals and Venezuelan criminals and then the hotels full of yeah. illegals that are being paid for by taxpayers? I, I'll have to Google that really <laughs> quick. How do they handle all their Haitian <laughs> migrant cannibals? How do they handle it? Oh. What do they do with their Spirit Airlines behavior? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Spirit's even over there. I don't know. I don't know if they fly to Haneda. Yeah. So obviously, Japan is like a high IQ country. It's a homogenous country. There's no real immigration. They have standards. They have shame. Standards. Social etiquette. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. I'm shocked. How did it get so cool? How did it get so, so nice? Clean. No one throws crap on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I think Jimmy could maybe ask his higher ups. Yeah. <laughs> he could ask his higher ups and just say, hey, like, why are we importing the third world? And why are all the criminals getting let out? And why are we promoting like a toxic culture and pornography? He can ask the higher ups and they'll probably tell him. He, yeah. He could be, he's big enough to get in on it now. They'll shoot straight with Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> and it's always funny to me when someone kind of like discovers something that they're not really supposed to advertise. Like, why is Japan so much better? Is it this easy? 
Same thing happened with Tucker in Russia in the subways. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't care what the political system is here, but the end result is very nice and orderly shit. So yeah. Jimmy Kimmel accidentally let the cat out of the bag on that one, I guess. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel uh, feels like there's a war against the West or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which takes us to our migrant section, Yeah, which is basically what's going on in the migrant section. Uh, the registered voters have increased uh, in Texas, Pe Texas, Pennsylvania, and Arizona. People registering to vote with no ID. Yeah, it's skyrocketing in three key swing states. Uh, yeah, you you said it, Texas, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and the data is publicly available. And and wokeness said illegals are not able to get licenses there, but they can still get social security cards for work, which I guess might be an end around. And this is getting some pushback online. Like people are saying, no, it's not technically what's happening. Um, but these numbers look huge on Texas. Like, and Texas is obviously uh, the apple of the left's eye. If you can flip Texas, it's it's over you got pretty it. much. Um, and so people are saying like, no illegals, there's no history of illegals voting and blah, blah, blah. All these little like past election things. And it's like, yeah, it was mail-in ballots last time. What do you think we have this time? What levers can we pull this time? Who's here? Who's then, new? Exactly. And then the graph of people registering to vote without an ID is like a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little bit. Boing. Uh, moonshot. <laughs> 270,000 in a week. So, yeah, that's a lot. And then the numbers um, since the beginning of the year in Texas, 1.25 million. Pennsylvania's 580K. Arizona's 220K. That's enough to win the election. Of course. That's the, enough to swing any election. Some, especially like Arizona, Pennsylvania. Those margins were obviously razor thin. Pennsylvania was one of the key states in the last uh, election that was kind of counting votes way too late. The Philly urban area was like, no, we still got a lot. We got baskets to count. Yeah. And uh, so that was obviously a, a huge state. Yeah, exactly. So like you said, for the election, obviously <laughs> last time was mail-in votes. This time, what's it going to be? I have a theory. Are they not going to use the 50 million illegals? <laughs> like, are, are they going to go, no, no, stay on the bench. We yeah. brought you here, but stay on the bench. Like, that doesn't make sense to That's me. That's what I'm wondering. And then for Joe Biden to win this time, he's going to need like 90 million votes. Uh, he's got to <laughs> go up, right? <laughs> exactly. He's got to go up. And where up to where? Yeah. At a certain point, it's like, oh, everyone in the eighty percent of the population voted. It's <laughs> crazy. Children. We've never seen this. So my theory is they could just botch the election. Yeah. And then what? Joe Biden and his team figures it out. Mm. Oh, if the election got botched. I'm the sitting president. We'll look into it. <laughs> Let's just let me stay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what I think is kind of happening. Um, obviously, with the illegals is a comes an increase in crime. Uh, there was a Chicago article that just came out. Can you give it a read? Yeah, this was from CWB Chicago, who we love. They always report on the actual facts instead of just like, man, 42 arrested, like a lot of reporters do. They get the details. They get quotes from the police. Uh, and in this week's new neighbor update, they say sarcastically, a Venezuelan man who allegedly told police he carried a taser because there are too many crazy people in the loop. And that was at the Herald Washington Library, which actually he's right. It is a crazy person. <laughs> but you're adding crazy people to the crazy people pile. Yeah. And then my my favorite is a Colombian native who allegedly told cops he carried a gun to protect himself from Venezuelans. <laughs> In Chicago. Which I get, yeah. You know, yeah. the Venezuelans are kind of becoming the menaces of the uh, of the whole thing. And so, I mean. Yeah, Chicago's too dangerous, said the Colombian yeah. carrying <laughs> criminal. Who came here. <laughs> yeah, cops allegedly found a loaded twenty five caliber handgun. Uh, and he said he used it for protection from the Venezuelans. So, so the Venezuelans are violent. Yeah, and then well, how do you respond to that violence? You, you don't call the cops. You just got to stay strapped. So Yeah, speaking of cops, in the New York City, there was a illegal who was doing crimes where he was impersonating a cop, and they <laughs> arrested him, and then they let him go. Yeah, this is actually, and it's an Indian. It's an Indian illegal scammer. Oh, so it's like we're we're. It's not just Mexican or Hispanic or you know Guatemalan Venezuelans. Venezuelans are the worst. But uh, the Indians get in and, you know, they, they can scam from India, which I don't. So they don't really even need to be here. But I'm going to read this. Uh, Gates Police Department responded to a resident who is actively on the phone. Basically, the guy was saying your Netflix account is expiring and you need to do some sort of like big transfer. And the resident was informed that uh, he was a Federal Reserve agent who would arrive to their house in a Kia. And the resident should provide the uh, Federal Reserve agent all the money that they just transferred. Resident realized it was a scam. While on the scene, officers observed a Kia pull into the driveway and a male 
exited wearing a bandana on his face. The officers confronted the male and detained him. The male, identified as Harpeet Singh, 29 years old, was taken into custody without incidents. He claimed he was helping pick up the money for a friend in New York City. Um, He was charged with attempted grand larceny third degree and impersonating an officer to commit a felony. Pretty, pretty substantial crimes, you know? You can't just get away with that. Uh, and But after contacting the Monroe County District's, District's Attorney's Office, Singh was released with an appearance ticket as the new charges were non-bailable offenses, thanks to New York's version of the Safety Act, where Smart. all the bail is defined, right? So you let him go on an appearance ticket, meaning you're trusting the guy who is impersonating an officer yeah. to come, and who's here illegally, to come to court to get into more trouble, you're, and the guy was already impersonating a cop, you're trusting him with the appearance ticket. Yeah, this is sort of an updated version of Catch Me If You Can, where the guy's just a 29-year-old Indian guy with low-level tech in a Kia, and then, but nobody's <laughs> chasing him. Yeah. There's no, there's no uh, Tom Hanks chasing Leo. It's yeah. just uh, Mr. Singh goes, okay, I can go. <laughs> and he's out. He's out. So yeah, and here's the New York City crime graph just as of late, which is obviously includes people besides illegals, but that's a straight lineup. Yeah. That's and, a shit coin lineup. I know. That was a it's a rug pull and then it recovered. Um <laughs> but NYC violent crime 2003 to t- uh, 2023, so like 20 years of work just to get a straight line right back up at the end of 2020 back in George Floyd. And everybody always says, you know, this was this was under Trump. And it's like was Trump supposed to send in the National Guard to every single major city that was just allowing like endless riots and not really policing and containing people? I don't know exactly how the president of the United States was supposed to stop that wave. And then obviously it's stuck, right? Mm-hmm. So this time, if it happens again, I think everyone's seen how it was dealt with on under Trump, mm-hmm. under Biden. And now if there's a BLM style mass protest, you send in the National Guard. I mean, I would and you now. you zip tie everyone up and you put them on the bus and you send them out. Yeah. Seattle had a Chaz. It was just yeah. like a, a sovereign zone in the city run by gang warlords. And it's like, why would we stop this? Yeah. But Trump better not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they were they were challenging him. Uh, there was a Venezuelan squatter story as well in New York City. We just obtained one police sprung into action, hopping out of their squad cars after they got a call about a man with a gun. When they arrived, they chased 24-year-old Hector De Soso Viata, believed to be from Venezuela, into the basement of this Hull Avenue home. Another man, 22-year-old Javier Alborno, tried to get away with another gun before he was also arrested. Playing on your screen now are four of the eight suspects that were under arrest being walked out one by one from police. When a search warrant was in place, investigators recovered two more loaded guns, three loaded extended magazines, a box of ammunition, and a bag of ketamine mixed with cocaine. Moments ago... Yeah, that's a good time. <laughs> hey, if you're Venezuelan, you can have guns, ketamine, cocaine, but yeah, and these were suspected Venezuelan illegals found squatting in the basement of a Bronx home. So squatting, ketamine, gun crimes, Venezuelans, the extended big, mags, the big four right there. Yeah. And there was a kid, too. Yeah. I think there was like a, an unaccount- a seven year old child, seven year old child unaccounted for. Um, but the extended mags in New York City, if you're a normal citizen, that gets you in big trouble. Of course. I, I wonder if these guys will get in trouble or if it'll get knocked down and dismissed. And next thing you know, they're back on the street and heading to Arizona to get away from New York. Hey, new me, new identity, new me. And they're 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 off somewhere else into the country. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's finish up the migrant section with kind of like a what to expect. Obviously, Europe has uh, had mass migration for longer than we have. Call that a leading indicator, right? Yeah, leading indicator. They're like a year or two ahead of us. Uh, And Germany, uh, Frankfurt, just released some stats of who's doing all the crimes. Can you give that headline a read? Yeah, the headline says foreigners responsible for 100% of serious sexual assault cases in Frankfurt, 57.4% of all crimes. The crime data shows that Frankfurt's sky-high crime rate is tied to mass immigration. Obviously, right? Yep, and they can give a read of the other crimes done by illegals. Sexual assault, 100%, like we just mentioned. Pickpocket incidents, 93%. Human trafficking, 83%. Uh, Day home burglary, 80%. Aggravated theft, 75%. It's just like every crime, they're doing the lion's share. And they're obviously not a lion's share of the population. So it's a new version of the X percent of the population is committing X percent of the crimes. We're we're like updating the model. 
yeah. in real time. And some of them is 100%. Yeah. Everybody. I, I, I read that, and I was like, we can't show this on the show. 100%? <laughs> that can't be right. Yeah. But I guess it was just a, a silent month for the actual Germans, and then uh, yeah, all the illegals do it. And then uh, not even illegals, whatever they want to call them, invaders, random people who just got here. Asylum. Yeah, it's all asylum seekers. Right. And then obviously in Europe, there's a general problem with child exploitation and abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse and everything on children. Yeah. Like it's skyrocketing as well. Uh, And then they released an ad, like a commercial to stop child exploitation. And here's the a couple screenshots from the video. Yeah. South Yorkshire police said stop child exploitation. And they show it looks like a white guy and again, pushing a minority girl against a wall. And then the same kind of thing on the swing set there. Just a guy talking to a young girl on the swing set. Yeah. And then here's the actual Huddersfield grooming game, a dedicated campaign of rape and abuse. And it's I'll read some names. Niaz Ahmed, Manzoor Hassan, Faisal Nadim and. They all look a certain way. Yeah. They're all those vaguely Asian or whatever they call them. Yeah. Groomers. Muslims. Uh, So basically they had the ad for we have to stop child abuse and they show white people as the abusers. And then you look at who's getting arrested and it's all Muslims from third world countries. Yeah. So the the advertisement that's supposed to elicit some sort of emotion on you just isn't accurate at all to what's currently happening. So detachment from reality and... That detachment from reality kind of breeds itself like to the policies, right? Nobody's looking, and the cops aren't knocking on anyone's doors. Um, yeah. It kind of that de- that delusion seeps into the, like the rest of society, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the same globalist anti-West playbook, anti-white playbook. And this is how they accomplish it. John Doyle had a very interesting and profound tweet. That kind of sums up our migrant situation. Can you give that a read, please? He said, Christians who support immigration will find that their country becomes far less Christian. If immigration is used as a weapon against you to consolidate power, it is, then your particular reasons for support don't actually matter. You're not outsmarting anyone. You're losing. Exactly. So as a Christian, if you're a Christian person and you find yourself troubled, like, oh, these people need help or these people want a better life. I don't want to turn anyone away. You kind of need to see the bigger picture. Immigration is being used as a tool to destabilize America. And if America is destabilized long term, it'll become less Christian. So if you want the country to be more Christian, you need to be anti-immigration, anti-illegal immigration. Yeah. Makes sense. It's pretty simple. Let's move on. We're on our last page of housekeeping. We are at our backwards and upside down section where everything is backwards and upside down. Yep. Uh, Our first one is Massachusetts doctors are doing something with drug babies. Yeah, these Massachusetts hospitals won't automatically file neglect reports for babies born with drugs in their system. Mass General Brigham said babies born with substance exposure alone will no longer be reported to state welfare agencies unless there are other concerns the baby is abused or neglected. So the baby needs to have drugs and a black eye. It, even when it just came out. Yeah, when it when it's brand new. Yeah, it just came out, and it's like they punched hey, the baby. I saw her hit him. So, yeah, and then actually this is also uh, – there's a subtext in the article that says uh, a condition which the hospital said disproportionately affects black people. So because too many black babies are born with drugs in their system – it's not worth reporting that as neglect to the system and getting the mom in trouble because it disproportionately affects black people. So at the expense of a newborn baby who's born uh, one day old, yeah, you're going to uh, let the parents get away with basically abuse and being negligent and doing drugs while nine months pregnant. Um, that's backwards and upside down. It's very backwards and upside down. And then when people people always try to do like a gotcha, like define woke. Right mm-hmm. to the right wing or something, and it's like you tell me what this is. Yeah, tell me what that is, and then I'll get to my definition of woke. Right. Mm-hmm. So exactly. Well, let's move on. We have a lot to get to in this part, so we'll go a little bit faster. Band Aid chemicals. Yeah, Band Aid, the thing that's supposed to heal you, uh, cause cancer causing forever chemicals found in Band Aids, where they can get directly into blood through open wounds. <laughs> report warns. So, like the last thing you'd want on an open wound. <laughs> Perfect they, storm. <laughs> they put on a Band Aid the thing you put on an open wound to heal yourself, and instead it gives you forever chemicals that give you cancer, that is back, that's backwards and upside down. Yeah, 65% of bandages can contain fluorine, uh, a necessary component of PFAs. PFAs, or forever chemicals, are in cookware, firefighting foam, and carpeting. 
So there's like a new wave. Like every time you think like, oh yeah, you know how we always used to use lead paint and then there was asbestos and all the like in insulation and buildings. It's like, I can't believe we did that. Yeah. And then you find out we're doing something new that like is almost as bad or cancer causing. And we're uh, still doing it. Yeah. And then the frying pans is the same thing. We get the forever chemicals. If you guys have those nonstick pans, you got cuts and scrapes in them. You're you got to call it. You got to call it. You just get a cast iron and that's it. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. Seattle Public Schools. No more gifted program in the name of equity. Yeah. And this is kind of an update on something that they announced, I believe, uh, like a year ago or so. But we wanted to get an update out there. Seattle Public Schools shut down gifted and talented program for inclusive alternative. Um, And basically... Seattle Public Schools is dismantling its gifted and talented program in favor of a more inclusive and equitable and culturally sensitive program. So uh, they're slowly phasing it out uh, because of racial inequalities, right? And here's a key sentence that I kind of thought was crazy. It says, uh, numbers would suggest that within our city, predominantly white children are more gifted than other cultures and races. And we know that is absolutely not true, Carrie Hansen, the district's director, said. Oh, it's absolutely not true. And it's like, we just know that the the entire article and dismantling a gifted thing is just like, well, we know there's a bunch of smart black kids who haven't gotten in, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the assumption that makes an entire change to a good system. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, there's no evidence. There's no proof. It's just, come on, guys. We know there should be more black kids in here, right? Yeah. And then also it says like the white culture is not better than any other culture. So that means what? Like which culture is the best? Yeah. They're all perfectly equal. Uh, that can't be right. Yeah. Um, and but, then let me yeah. let me read this. The enrichment program currently only allow allows students who placed in the top two percent on standardized test exams to be placed in the highly capable cohort to receive enriched learning. So they say it's like literally just defined top two percent and you're in. That's it. All no you got to do. No All you got to do is top 2%. They don't say, are you Chinese? Are you, <laughs> you Chinese on this shit? Yeah, compare uh, the piece of paper to yeah. their skin. Go, yeah. mm. <laughs> they have the the, the, the the bag test. Yeah, the shade, the shade test. And, you know, it's just, oh, we know that's not true. The top 2%, there should be black kids in here. Let's reinvent the whole program, right? Yeah, nice of them. So no more gifted program in the sake of equity because it isn't, it's too white and Asian, even though the requirement is purely based on scoring. So no more excelling in schools because some of the dumb kids will feel bad. And one of my favorite is one of the black parents whose kid was already in this gifted program who tested into the top 2%. He goes, what are we doing? And they just ignored him. They're like, no, no, no. Don't worry about it, bro. Yeah. So backwards and upside down for sure. All right. Last piece of backwards and upside down. January 6th, grandma. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Yeah. This grandma, uh, Rebecca Laverne's. Lavrens, this grandmother is currently on trial in D.C. for January 6th. This is who our government is focused on locking up while violent criminals and illegals go free. It's not an accident. It's an agenda. Look at this nice know. lady. Just a grandma. She was wandering around. She was Don't. wandering around and she <laughs> needs to get arrested f- three years later. Yeah. Crazy. For what? Um, and then uh, the abortion protesters. So there were people who protested in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, they just kind of did a sit-in and then they did a prayer. Mm-hmm. And now they're facing 11 years in jail. Can yeah. You read that? Four more pro-lifers that were involved in this protest outside of a Nashville abortion clinic have just been found guilty in federal court of violating the FACE Act. That's now 10 people who face 11 years in jail for praying for the unborn. Yeah. So, great. great. Backwards and upside down. People that did a peaceful protest uh, for the unborn, they get 11 years in jail. All the BLM people who burned down cities and looted and destroyed everything, they got paid out. Yeah. And the catch me if you can Indian guy, he's on the run and he's looking in his (laughs) rear view mirror. He's looking in the rear view and he's like, wow, wide open road. Nobody's chasing me. (laughs) And then the Tom Hanks person from that movie is like, where's a grandma? (laughs) Where's a January 6th grandma? Get on the ground. (laughs) All right, well, that is the end of housekeeping. We're moving on to Cringe of the Week. Crazy housekeeping. Wow, that was a good one. A lot of of bang, bang, bangs. Yeah, we bang, bang, banged them today. Uh, Well, in Cringe, our first clip is the bearded woman uh, who wants a masculine man. No one's going to marry you, Hernan. Like, you have a beard. Mm -hmm. No one's going to date you, Hernan. You have a beard. No one's going to be your boyfriend, Hernan. You have a beard. You are not a preference to a lot of men. And then I'll get um, 
like really feminine men message me, but that's not who I'm attracted to. Mm -hmm. Hannah, I like really masculine men because I am I am very soft. Uh, I'm so different to what you see like on TV. You know, on TV. I've never seen you on TV. I mean, yeah. not, but no, generally you'll see. Oh, she's strong. She's you know what she's talking about is very powerful. Whatever people say, but then at home I'm very quiet. You know, I'm I'm very feminine. I'm very soft. People don't get to see that side of me. You know. Um, but no, it has been difficult. Where She's I very to... feminine. Yeah. <laughs> so people look at her and they go, what? That's a soft feminine. Oh, <laughs> shit. No, it's a bearded lady. What happened? <laughs> Who's this dainty lady? Yeah. Wow. Ooh, uh, a wooga. <laughs> so it makes you wonder, what's the angle here? Should you make society change something so fundamentally backwards that until recently was a circus act? Or... Should you just get the laser hair removal and then gaslight your husband when your daughter comes out with the beard too? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't even know what's happening here genetically. Is this like, did she go for the beard? Did she want the beard? Because this seems like a real lady to just me, Just right? laser it out. And then if you have a daughter with a hairy face, be like, what happened? Yeah, no, th this is exactly like that uh, that meme where the guy goes, please someone help me with my budget. Rent, 800. Uh, food, 200. Utilities, 100. Candles, thirty six hundred dollars <laughs> and it's just like just remove the beard it's that's that. <laughs> that's it and like the first thing people see about you um but yeah the the amount of me i me i want i'm not attracted to it and it's like you have a beard you didn't do any expectation management or change anything mm -hmm. you thought like oh, i'll go and then this guy on the other end of the podcast is going like Kind of reminds me of me when you're doing some real schizo shit. Like, yeah, okay, sounds good. Just shave the fucking beard. Yeah. So that's the fundamental disconnect there where she wants something so specific. She wants a masculine husband. And because she's not getting it and she has something clearly going on that needs to be fixed so she could fit into society, she needs all of society to change. So her not getting what she wants is a sign that society's broken when you're a bearded lady, like that's the broken part. I think that's also a sign of mental illness almost when you think you can be the one who's the tip of the spear changing society. Mm -hmm. Like instead of accepting reality, it's a, re it's a very much a reality ignorer. Yeah, right? that's a good point. So, And I was going to say, she could probably get a modeling job. Oh, yeah. But not like, and she might think like, oh, I have a modeling job. I'm on the cover of magazines and I can't find a man. Like same how Dylan Mulvaney is. Of course. And that's like how it is with Lizzo too. Yeah, Lizzo, she, she can't find a, she's great at singing. She can't find a husband because no one cares that she's good at the flute. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple. The, the one giant, a gigantic single glaring uh, like red flag prevents pretty much anything. So maybe your entire mission should be to minimize that giant glaring red flag. Right. Exactly. It's actually it's, it's not that hard. Yeah. yeah. This isn't even worth the time, to be honest, on the podcast. The bearded lady crying. Yeah. Come on. Let's move on. Yeah. Let's go to the the guys getting face Botox. Um, but here they are. They're getting lined up and they're getting injections and like Botox into like the sides of their jaw to make their jaw look a certain way. Yeah. They want the Giga Chad jaw, right? They want the Giga Chad jaw. OK. Mm -hmm. The guy in the yellow. That wasn't bad. <laughs> That's as good as it gets, That's right? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. He's getting a lot out of it. Um, what is this? It's filler? They just put like some silicone or something yeah, in, the, yeah. in it? And it makes your facial muscles messed up and paralyzed. You have that. The stuff moves around in there. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, you're setting yourself up for like yearly checkups. Yeah, and you're filling your face with like weird silicon bad stuff. This is toxins. This is technically gender affirming care. Oh yeah. So the army has to pay for it now. <laughs> yeah. Right. And these guys, there's like this new type of uh, group of men, like these types, who are trying to be alpha, but they're not naturally alpha. Looks so, maxing. So they're looks maxing. They get these injections in their jaw. They learn how to neg women, where you're kind of negative and like, huh, what do you? What do you always wear that to the club? <laughs> yeah. What do you? You're smart. Yeah. <laughs> they do that, or they know how to stand in pictures with their wide base in a straight line, so they, they pass the green line test. Uh, they take steroids with the mail-in steroid companies. Like that, you have like a whole group of men like this that are kind of LARPing as chads, and they look like real chads until it's time to wrestle. Yeah, until it's until there's an active shooter or something. I don't know. And then you're like, "Ah oh, shit, like you're wearing you're wearing the lifts in your shoe. You have the fake jaw and you're like, "I got it. It's go time." Yeah, exactly. You can't really run very good with the 4-inch lifts in your shoes. Yeah. Um but you might be wondering, well, what are they supposed to do? 
there are actually ways to Chad Max and get out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you eat a lot of steak, I'm not just saying that, uh, your jaw will get bigger naturally. Uh, if you're eating a lot of like meat protein, your face will look better. Um, Things that are literally harder to chew. Yeah, exactly. Um, y your tongue posture is huge. A lot of people are mouth breathers and they just kind of breathe like this and they look like this and then their face naturally sags and droops because of it and your chin recesses. Is that the right word? I think so. You get slack jaw. You get some sort of slack jaw. You get jaw. slack jaw and you, you, you have like that weak no chin. Uh, but if you leave the your tongue on the roof of your mouth and kind of like suck and like have suction, it's called mewing. That's the correct way. And you breathe in through your nose only. And look at these before and afters. This guy, he made it out. He made it out. This little Asian guy made it out. This, this was a big one. That's a huge one. Look yeah. at that difference. Yeah, glasses. He took the glasses off, too. He took the glasses huge. off. Huge. And so it's like if you breathe correctly and you do the correct tongue posture, your face will naturally shift to the ideal face for you genetically. And you also have uh, in the palate you know, underneath your in, uh, underneath your uh, top jaw, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's like ability for that bone to move. Like it's meant to to grow or shrink depending on how you're breathing and what your face is resting at. So if you keep your tongue on the top of your mouth and suck in and kind of keep that pressure, and you breathe in through your nose your face will move into a better position. Yeah, we need a show watcher to volunteer to start mewing for yeah. the next two months and then give us the before and after. Yeah, exactly. So look it up. It's very good info. Uh, don't breathe through your mouth. And that, that's, a huge, that's a huge part of it. I think there's also going to be an epidemic of these looks maxing guys in the four inch lifts and uh, his wife has fake boobs and like the whole fake face and everything. And they're on vacation, and then you see them, and you go, wow, look at these people. They're really doing up to something. And then their kids just, like, disfigured freak, <laughs> like, uh, like the true genetics of both of them. Yeah, that's so a good point. mismatched parents and children with the new future of look, looks maxing. Smart, smart, smart. So, yeah, there's the solution. Don't take the cheap way and fill yourself with Botox. Solve the fundamental problem, and your body will reward you genetically. Fair. Speaking of gender affirming care, the your trans one, this is good. This lady? Yeah. This guy. <laughs> yeah. You're trans? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never would have guessed. Huh. What do you mean by that? I mean, like, you pass so well. Like, you look like a real woman. Well, I am very real. So. My pronouns are rose all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, why do you look better in that dress than I would? Because I'm hotter than you. Slay queen, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Literally work. Do you watch Drag Race? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Of course you do. Like, duh, dumb question. Is it? I had a cashier once. So, the person- Because I'm hotter than you. This <laughs> yeah. man in the, the lady's clothes is doing two roles in the skit. <laughs> Just losing her mind in her apartment, <laughs> yelling back, you're hotter than me, I'm hotter than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real woman. Going crazy in the apartment. Um, and then this is interesting because this was a video posted complaining about how trans allies like ask passive aggressive backhanded compliment questions yeah. or a well-meaning trans ally who still is pissing you off, right? Your yeah. supposed friend. So you have rules of engagement from your sausage fingered trans friend. Yeah. You basically there's a few no no topics that you can never broach with the trans person because that you you make them glitch out for a second and go, Am I? Am I a man, <laughs> not a woman? So, like, these are, if you're a trans person, these are your allies. These are people you invite into your home or out to drinks, and you still have to be the warden. You ha you're the warden, and you're nitpicking their little behavior, like, no posters on the wall. No, what, what's that? Contraband, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like a messed up scenario, and these are the people that you're actually, that actually believe in you. Yeah. You know? They're actually playing the game and using the stupid words and going, oh, what do you want me to call you? Okay, I'll call you that. You're, yeah, you are a woman. But it's like you didn't say it correctly enough to prove how woman I am. We need total compliance and anything less, you will be uh, reprimanded. Right? Exactly. Total compliance. And it makes you wonder if this is how the trans allies are treated. If the trans people get power, I'm going into a camp. Oh, I'm getting beheaded. I'm, I'm getting beheaded. <laughs> line up. <laughs> face, yeah. face the mass grave ditch. Yeah. And then I get blown out. Yeah. And the commandant, the warden, will be there and be like, you should have called me a real lady. Yeah. <laughs> Pull exactly. the trigger. All right. Last clip of cringe. Uh, the minimum wage in California. They have a new rule now. $20 minimum wage for fast food workers. And here's the results. We had walked up and those close signs, that was it.
20 employees and the more were let go today because the owner says he could not afford to pay them with that increase. Now employees are upset, saying they were blindsided when coming into work. Fox 26 reporter Sophia Lessios explains why those employees were in disbelief. Sophia, quite a surprise. Yeah, Monty, former employees tell me that at first they thought it was an April Fool's joke, but that quickly changed when their boss handed them their final check. I was so caught off guard. Um, we had no type of notice, no type of warning even. Um, I mean, the owner had told me Happy Easter. Employees at Foster Freeze and Lemoore say they're now out of a job. We had gotten a text in the group chat that we were um, shutting down and I completely thought it was an April Fool's joke. Turns out he wasn't the only one. Did you guys think that this was an April Fool's joke? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I thought like, you must be joking. You must be playing with me. Mm. This was no yeah. Well, April 1st is a tough day to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll side with these guys out there. You know when sometimes people, something happens in California and people will say, well, that's what you voted for. That's what you get. Um, or in New York, same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like sometimes sad or in bad taste to do it. Like an old lady gets pushed down onto the subway tracks and it's like, well, that's what you voted for. <laughs> and it's like, not cool. <laughs> yeah. It's not cool. The Asian guy with the dangling earring? Yeah. This is what he voted for. He voted for this 100%, <laughs> right? He said, oh, man, min minimum wage has to go up. I can't I can't support myself and a family on uh, whatever I get paid from the milkshake place. Mm -hmm. We need more money. We need $20 minimum wage. And they go, okay, no more job. The company's closed. And it's, it's over. And it's not an April Fool's joke, buddy, Jason. Yeah. And exactly. And a lot of times these workers... Uh, like the whole idea of increasing minimum wage sounds good and you have your useful idiots coming out and like cheering for it. Mm -hmm. But what what is really going to happen is stuff like this where the businesses will close and then those workers, if the business stays open, will get replaced with AI. Yeah. So they're going to raise the minimum wage, change everything now. And they go, OK, we raised it. And instead of everyone getting more money, it's less people work here and there's two more robot kiosks instead. And there was some discourse on Twitter where In-N-Out Burger was charging just a little bit more. And uh, a lot of leftists were kind of dunking and were saying like, oh, uh, so you're telling me minimum wage went up 35 percent or whatever it is. I don't remember it off the top of my head. And prices only went up 10 percent. That's called good policy making. And like leftists were kind of like bragging that this was good. And we're talking about literally the most popular fast food restaurant in the entire state of California, mm. like with the most money and the biggest coffers and they're a private company, you know, that's in and out. So whereas the small business where this guy's been in business for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years or whatever, it's like, yeah, we're closing up today, yeah. one day notice. And then for some reason, Panera Bread is exempted from this. Hmm. And but I think there are do big donors to Gavin Newsom. So they put a caveat in this that said, if you have a bakery you don't have to uh, pay this minimum wage. So if you're a restaurant that has a bakery and it's like, who are Gavin Newsom's biggest donors? And it's like, oh, Panera. And oh. Every Panera has a bakery. So why did that rule get in? So I like that. That's like uh, Gotham City politics. Exactly. That's inside <laughs> baseball shit. That's so I good. mean, while, while this small business owner has to close. And again, it's like, we've already tightened the hands around the neck of a lot of small business owners during COVID and they barely survived. And now uh, the next step is ra forcibly raising the minimum wage. So- here yeah. we are. You got to raise minimum wage. But these people that work there, they probably all went to college. They're probably Some all in them. debt. And they, you know, so it's like you have like this whole class of people who feels oppressed. Um, and I was looking at a Chinese donut boy, I think it's Twitter. And he found, uh, he tweeted something about how useless the workers are these days. Mm -hmm. Can you give that a read? Until you've hired for a sub 80K job, you have no idea how incompetent people are. 90% either no-show slash show up late, are disheveled, can't follow simple instructions. Anyone who thinks they can solve wealth inequality is kidding themselves. Average person can barely tie their shoes. That's kind of how I see it, too. Yeah. Unfortunately. Competency in America is not trending in the right direction, either. It's not like we're getting better. They're removing the gifted programs. They're, you know, everything's going to the lowest common denominator, importing low IQ people. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't know where we're going to trend. Hey, GDP's up though. Mm -hmm. But uh, the quality of life and the content of everyone's character is not trending in the right direction. That is very true. Well, let's move on. Don't get too down or too depressed. It's going to get a little bit worse in urban decay. St. Louis Park public schools are hiring a superintendent and look what the requirements are. Yeah, the St. Louis Park Public Schools, which is in Minnesota, right? Minnesota, yeah. Uh, 
is hiring an assistant superintendent with a $200,000 annualized salary, one of the top job requirements, examining the presence of whiteness. And it says, seek multiple racial perspectives, examine the presence and role of, quote, whiteness in systems and structures, and are open to feedback regarding their own racial blind spots. And another part says, proactively seeks to create and communicate anti-racist structures and systems to interrupt systems of oppression, confront presence and role of whiteness. Wow. So that's, that's nothing. That's a whole yeah. lot of word salad for nothing. So, so I'll do 200 grand. I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> we had to make sure less whiteness. So, but also keep in mind. I would love to see a white person get this job. I hope just, so. You know, decenter their own whiteness. But this is white taxpayer dollars. Of course. Being used against the best interest of white people. Mm -hmm. And then very blatantly, you have to realize where we are, right? Where not only is this not some sort of immediate violation of the Civil Rights Act, someone thought they could type out this, this description, they could publish this description and then survive the no or, or get no pushback of that description and then just get away with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like four steps, four hurdles they have to go past. And they're like, yeah, let's publish it. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> They do it. So, I mean, realize where we're at, guys. The the white hate is at an all-time high. Very all-time high. And here's some more white hate here at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. Spirit Airlines. So that was some people trying to catch they flight. So people trying to catch they flight and they're decentering whiteness when it comes to airport behavior. So yeah, exactly. And then uh, I saw this on Twitter. It was a picture of a guy uh, who they confirmed was a white supremacist mm -hmm. uh, because he had SS sweatshirt on. Yeah, it says uh, yeah SS basically white boy it says i guess it's like yeah it's like white boy summer or something with an ss uh lightning bolt and people were posting it like we got this asshole that's the proof of racism right that exists yeah so this guy right here who's Bu buying who's buying ginger ale yeah he's the one holding everyone back he's the one messing up society he probably lives in the middle of nowhere He's he, like a mechanic. He's wearing pajama pants to the grocery store. He does all the federal hiring in America. I know it might shock <laughs> you guys, but he does all the federal hiring in America. So. Yeah, he's in charge of admissions at UPenn. Yeah, <laughs> actually all the Ivies, they roll up to him. <laughs> he goes, the white ones only. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so that's the one holding everyone back. That's the problem in society. Like the white supremacists, like that's that's what they look like if you're truly like a... Uh, a Nazi or whatever they're saying, like that, that that's the type. And again, this is a words versus actions thing where it's like, he's wearing something. He didn't do anything. He's checking out and buying ginger ale, but yeah. uh, actions of other people are actually causing an impact somewhere. Yeah. He checked out and bought the ginger ale. He, he paid for it. He had looted it <laughs> yeah. and been like, Oh, these white supremacists are ruining our store. I'm entitled to this as a white man, <laughs> yeah. the Schweppes. <laughs> And then he, uh, yeah, exactly, he was ruining the store. And then people could go, oh, these white people are ruining the fabric of our society. Um, let's go on to the guy who says that black on black crime is a myth. This is pretty interesting. You knew there was over 200 school shooters in this year, all by white people, right? Committed against white people. No word of white on white violence. They, you hear the word black on black violence to desensitize you when they harm you. So they allowed to kill you. But you're not supposed to get upset because you kill you. Everybody killed. People kill where they live, where they live in pro close proximity with. The Asians do it. The whites do it. The Indians mm, do it. So everyone does it. Yeah. But it's like, nah, black people are kind of doing it worse than everybody. And the whole per capita thing, which is hard for some people to understand, we're actually getting close to not even uh, having a per capita conversation. It's just in general. It's a sheer volume conversation. It's <laughs> yeah. a volume play. It's a volume play at this point. Yeah. And if you were looking, if you were in the KKK, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you were looking at like what's going on in society, a KKK person would be mad at white people. He'd be like, oh, you guys aren't killing anybody. Yeah. <laughs> and then he would, he would love the black people, the black criminals. Yeah. Like, oh, you guys are doing great numbers. Like, that's like it's that's kind of how it would break down. And I think I heard some former KKK guy once on like a social media clip or something say like, man, you know, we don't have to do anything. You can just drive in, drop a crate of guns off in the hood and they'll do it themselves type yeah. of thing. And it's like and also in terms of like the black on black. 
it's because partially because black people complain so loudly about like they're killing us or they're doing this. And it's like, well, I, let's segment by data. And it's like, I, it's you. Mm. It's self-inflicted, right? And then if you look at interracial murder charts, like Chinese people or Asian people murdering blacks, whites, and Asians, right? They all stay within Asians. White people murder white people for the most part. The one interracial spike that happens everywhere is blacks to others. It's blacks, blacks killing everybody. Yeah. So. Including themselves a lot. And it's just it's just reality, right? These are like FBI crime statistic tables. It's not it's not some grand conspiracy. It's just victim, perpetrator, list. Yeah. And this guy makes it seem like, oh, everyone's doing the same amount of killing, but they're only reporting on the black killing. It's like that's not true. They're underreporting black killing. Whenever it's a white person who kills a black person, they overreport that. And then when it comes to the numbers of people in jails, they're misrepresenting and labeling black criminals as white. Yeah. So it's like everything is working in the favor of the public perception of black people. So everything this guy's saying is like completely backwards and it should be backwards and upside down. Yeah. And he's taking this approach like the words are the problem. And I'm pretty sure Kanye and Jay-Z had a song on Watch the Throne. Where it's like, people read murder, black on black murder. So like, are they in on it or something? Mm. I, I don't, I don't know. They must I, be. Well, I think people need to call it out within the community. And otherwise, like, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to hear it from a white guy randomly. Like, oh, you guys really got to fix the problems. So you, you need leaders to emerge from your own communities, right? And until that happens, I don't think there's ever going to be a slowing down of this. That's smart. And that's true. Here's a myth, a black on black crime myth now at the car show in Florida. What's he here? You know what? Hold on. You get the fuck go, out. Go, go. Yeah. No, 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 no. What's he getting? And then the guy runs him over. You talking crazy. And the girl's running up with a gun. What's she going to do? Execute him? There's more whiteness ruining Florida. Crazy. It's interesting because you see, like you said, the girl with the gun at the end. She's running in there. For white people, guns are like a concealed carry type thing that you use in self-defense or in like a last worst case scenario. Like a de-escalation. I really don't want to pull this out, but if you force my hand, I will have to defend myself, right? That's like the yeah. proper use of a, a of a handgun. I'm noticing that urban black folks and black criminals, the gun is an accelerator. It's yeah. a offensive escalator weapon where it's like, oh, you're talking shit? What now? Like, yeah. let's, let's see who's going to be talking shit I after bet this. you'll take that back now that I yeah. pulled the gun out. And I'm going like, to show them. Yeah. There's no – nobody takes the high road. Nobody, like uh, – says, oh, I better de-escalate this. Otherwise, it could get tragic. Yeah. They, they're like looking to make it a bigger problem. It's a way to make people shut up. And then also these guys, these are like fully grown adult men who made it to their 40s and you're going to get into like some sort of, the guy's got a nice car, right? Mm -hmm. for, for him, he likes that car. And then the, you're talking crazy. This guy's got his matching jazz outfit. These are older guys who are getting into some like, what, high level violence for no reason? Throw their whole life away for this Tuesday night in Miami. You made it this far, and then like a little argument is going to ruin your life. So I don't even know. Crazy. Well, let's go to our second to last. Eh, we have more actually, but there's the whole crew high. No. Oh, yeah. This is some more uh, whiteness ruining America, I guess. Not these niggas. Not everybody high. <laughs> Not everybody high. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, there you go. You know, there's an argument to be made that these fentanyl guys are better than the crystal meth guys. They don't get as high strung and tweaked out, but the end result is still stealing to feel it, feed their drug That's addiction. That's true. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, moving on to our final page of Urban Decay, uh, there was a crash and killed while twerking story. I guess it was in Miami. Is that correct? No, this was in England. Oh. Um, yeah, so it was in England, I believe, and the title says a young driver killed two passengers who were filmed twerking in the back of her Mini Cooper before it crashed. Mm. Uh, so this girl was driving a Mini Cooper, picked up two friends from the club, um, and they were driving and posting videos. One of the guys was working at the nightclub. Uh, Mr. Sabide told police Jamaican music had been playing, and he had been taken a video of the two passengers twerking in the back. 
Just before the collision, CCTV showed the Mini Cooper traveling at 62 miles per hour. Before its wheels started to grind against the raised curbstones on Latchmere Road, and the car overturned. The defendant told the witness at the scene, don't call the police or ambulance, I'll get arrested. She then claimed to a police officer the incident was a hit and run. So people are like <laughs> choking on their own blood after just twerking and it's, don't call the police, don't call the paramedics, right? Smart. Um, the, and then also a little caveat from the article, the defendant asserts that she was not above the legal limit for alcohol in the blood at the time of the collision because in a panic after the collision, she drank from a bottle of alcohol that the passengers in her car had been drinking from. The old, oh, I drank after I flipped the car and killed two people. Yeah, you flip the car, the cops are on the way, you have a quick drink to kind of cool your nerves. So I would say this might be the first twerking death that we've seen, twerking distracted related deaths that I'm we've sure seen. I'm sure people have died from- But I think there's been a stray bullet or two that's got to Twerking work related yeah. incidents for sure. So just fascinating headline and this person, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, probably be let off- Sooner than someone who posts a mean or racist Facebook meme. Yeah, that's. Let's keep an eye on that. I think that person will be let off or get a joke punishment because they're black. Yeah, there's too many black people in jail, and it's like, well, you flipped your car while drunk driving and twerking, and you killed people, and you you lied to the police, said it was a hit and run. Maybe you get locked up for a little bit. I th think you probably <laughs> should. I don't know. They, yeah. Remember, we were talking about enhancements last episode. Enhance, enhance, enhance twerking. That's an enhancement. Yeah. Well, let's move on to a taxpayer getting ripped off section. Yeah. Uh, this is someone who's swapping EBT for discounted cash. I'm about to buy all these groceries. It's the worst groceries EBT's you've ever seen. The EBT. Sunny D and Gushers. So they about to give it, and I'm, and I'm going to give them some cash for it. You about to flip it. How much is on there? $483. $483? Hell yeah. You damn right. Fuck yeah. We got ourselves. I'm going to do 400 though. Yep. We got ourselves a deal. Hell. So you get a discount. Two visible opiate addicts tweaking in the grocery store, and their government funded EBT card is going to buy all those shitty groceries for you, and it's only going to cost you $200. So who wins? The druggie, the guy buying shitty groceries, and who loses? The U.S. taxpayer, right? Yeah, exactly. And then for this, um, this cashier is watching the negotiation with visible drug addicts happen to rip off the taxpayer for EBT. And you know how like teachers in schools, uh, they're mandatory reporters. Where if a kid has like a bruise or something. Yeah, if you see signs of child abuse, you have to. You're mandatory. You have to report that to someone higher up, and then an investigation will start. I think the cashiers for EBTs need to be mandatory reporters <laughs> when they see a clear drug transaction, right? Wow. So that's what's going on. Taxpayer dollars pay for those services, EBT, and I'm sure this is happening every day, every city in America. We're, and you know how we're at the peak of like illegal immigration? We're at the peak of like urban decay. We're really at the peak of the American taxpayer just being f fucking hosed. Yeah. Like the worst value the proposition that there's ever been is right now. Yeah. Druggies, illegals, no roads, no new like massive super projects. And taxes are high right now too. Of course. Like the, like the amount of tax bang for your buck for like what the average citizen gets for how much they pay. Mm -hmm. It just goes to Ukraine, yep. it goes to all these stupid countries, and then it goes to these street rats and illegals. And then your prop We're fucked. I know. And then your property taxes that go to like uh, – that are supposed to go to the local school system. Well, the local school system, we're getting rid of the gifted program. Yeah. We're, you know, we're busting in new students and we have to teach English as a second language now. And it's all these ruined things. So the taxpayer is really getting hosed. Don't get too down or too depressed. The bomb's going off on April 8th. Yeah, we have to say <laughs> our goodbyes at Uplifting Gold. Uh, we have one more clip from Urban. Okay. Uh, the formula thief. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this guy. So this is, I mean, from uh, Mimetic Sisyphus slash our, uh, a thing we've done before on the show, which is show this sign, baby formula has been relocated to the customer service desk. Please see customer service and we'd be happy to help. And then this trans person goes, literally a store in my city today. Like, oh man, the humanity, like left to see this and think, I don't know, a single mother has a lone tear streamed down her face and she had to steal, right? Mm -hmm. for To feed her baby. Here's what's really going on though. Stolen from Walmart, worth $1,291 of baby formula. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. I think you're gonna need more cart. So three carts full, and it says, "In Jesus' name, help single dad have three kids, blessings, or mm. something, blessed day." So, yeah, the Democrats will say this is some sort of cheaper by the dozen situation. The Steve Martin. Yeah, movie. it's a it's a movie. And then the <laughs> wife brought in six kids and the dad brought in six kids. And then and it's a rom com. Now they lost their job standing up for the illegal immigrant saying yeah. you take my job instead. And this actually says it's worth over five thousand dollars of baby formula trying to be stolen in one go. And uh, yeah, left us be like, they had kids. Yeah, and they're flipping it. They're they're taking Easily flippable shit and make turning it into cash for what? Drugs, rent, whatever. No, they don't pay rent. This guy's a squatter. Mm. You know, there's there's some guy who's doing it all. He steals baby formula. He's squatting in a house. He's an illegal Venezuelan, you <laughs> yeah. know? Like there's one guy who's really hitting the cycle. And th yeah, they can kind of like write a book about like, you can come to America. It's like, yeah, you can come to America and have it your way. How to hose America, right? Yeah. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. Moving on to uplifting gold. We have some good uplifting stuff. Our first story in uplifting gold, the Devils versus the Rangers. New York hockey is back. I don't even know if it was over. Is it hockey season? Yeah. <laughs> um, but they played against each other. Obviously, it's a rival game. Stanley Cup's usually in June, I think. So. Okay. So it's hockey season. Uh, New Jersey Devils versus New York Rangers. Uh, obviously, a grudge match, uh, competitive match. First things first. Go Devils. <laughs> David Putty shit. Yeah. First things first. The Before the thing even started. A five on five fight. Yeah, they they barely drop the puck, and there everybody immediately drops gloves. Everyone's got gloves off, and it's a fight. Love to see it. That's Americana. You'd think that's the kind of thing they would stop doing or make illegal, but five on five fight right away. The goalies are fighting. There was only four. The goalie reps. tried to drop his gloves, but I don't think anybody challenged him. And then the coaches were jawing at each other. This is like just a pure grudge match. Brutal. Love to see it. Yeah. It's Love good. to see. That's they, uplifting. They want to take that away, I think. I they think do. They're looking to take that away. Especially since it's all white boys. Oh, yeah. So that's good to see. Uh, still America at some places in, uh, in the country. Our next clip is this kid on the exercise equipment. Okay, we share all the memes about how children are weak and can't do what we used to do. This thing, literally, you're supposed to run up this ramp, jump, grab, and hang. This is the ramp. Oh. <laughs> that, that, that dude, feeling of landing directly on your back and you and, go Ugh! and look at his arms this is how you do double snapped arms too yep hey if you're gonna fall make sure you tuck the arms boys yeah but well, that's good playground stuff i yep. like to see the kids uh getting hurt on the playground in a not so bad way have you ever dude i remember one time when i was a kid i had the air knocked out of me so bad that i couldn't breathe for like it felt like a minute and i thought i was gonna die every kid needs to go through that yeah. It's called The Ringer. I had that once, too. I was in seventh grade, my first time doing seventh grade. I did seventh grade twice. <laughs> <laughs> he admits it. It's a little hack. It helps you get bigger for football. No, I wish my parents did that with me. And it's a good thing to do. If you have like a football-playing kid, you hold them back a year, especially if their birthday – like my birthday was the end of the summer, so I could have been like a younger kid in one grade or an older kid in the other. And that's what I was. I was young for my grade. I'm, I'm a June birthday. Yeah, so I'm a, a, end of August, uh, so – I my first time doing seventh grade. So when I was a young kid, <laughs> that sentence is so uh, good. I was playing on. Just the admit you wore a helmet and you were kind of retarded. I was a little retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I did wear a helmet, but that's because, like, I would hit it against the window on the bus. And yeah, I, I didn't want to get bruises. The loud sounds, the loud noises <laughs> bothered me. Um, and then I was so it was my first time doing seventh grade, and I was playing on the eighth grade team because I was. Uh, fat <laughs> this <laughs> story is like the perfect so i was like young for my grade but big so i was playing on the eighth grade team and i got cracked back blocked against carl place uh-huh and i never got hit like that it was like the one time in my life i've ever really been like fully depleted yeah uh, and i got the wind knocked out of me i went to the sidelines got the wind back and i was like thought i was done and then my coach goes you ready to go back in <laughs> and i just said no wow <laughs> I know. It was at the end of the game. It was the fourth quarter. There was like five minutes left, and I just oh said, my God. I just said no. Hey. And that was bad. Hey, that was bad. That's big of you to admit that but on I camera. My that. second time in seventh my grade. first time in seventh grade. Oh, yeah. Grade. <laughs> the first so time I, I did. Young and big. The first time in seventh kids. grade, I was too fat to be on the seventh grade team. So I'm on the eighth grade team, so and I'm I young quit. against older kids. And, uh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. and that's I, such I got, a bad I got story. Laid out. That's such it a was bad. Yeah, right, good, I got I got laid, I got the, not laid out, but one time against Harvard, uh, we threw a pick, and I went to go tackle the guy, and some other guy kind of blindsided me, and I fell down. Uh, that was the only two times I've ever been defeated by another man. All right. Hey. <laughs> Hey, we've all had those moments, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Americana. All right, little kid versus the bug. Yep, this kid. Come on, Spoon, I need you. Hurry up, come on. He the man of the house. I need you. <laughs> I got you. You got me. I like this guy. I need you to take care of that problem right there. It's too big. It's too big. I see you now. You going to hit it? Get back, get back, get back. Okay, don't miss it. Y'all get back. Get back. Hurry up, fully jump. He that leg moving, I see you. You see that leg moving? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to handle it like a man, Spooter. You got this. I got it. What are you doing? <laughs> Not even close. Chucks it and runs. Oh, that chuck and run is uplifting gold, but man, the the language they're using. And then what's his name? Spooty or something that's like kind of like a... Something I never heard of. Uh, uh, it's teetering almost out of uplifting mm. gold for me. Yeah. Last clip, geese in the sky. This lady's watching. We can't show the music because it's some copyright song, but it's some old lady laying down, and look at all those geese. That's like air traffic control shit. And they're migrating, snow geese migration. Look at that, all over the sky. Isn't that nice? How do they know who their buddies are? How do they know like who their flock and pack is? They go, they vibe it. It's all in their DNA. Yeah, that's crazy. They're programmed. It's pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's the end of our uplifting gold. It is Friday, so we have a pretty, I mean, pretty substantial shout out session. Substantial shout out session. <laughs> Let's get to it. First things first. Happy birthday to Alessa on April 3rd. Happy birthday. Her and her dad, Cody, are big show watchers and supporters. And me and her dad talk about shit coins together sometimes. Really? So, yeah, good guy, good family, show watchers, very grateful. Uh, happy birthday on March 30th to Alex. Uh, we missed that one because uh, we didn't have a show last Friday. Uh, he got a bonus land membership from his girlfriend. Very nice. Happy birthday to Jenny Allen. Uh, on April 2nd. Happy birthday, Jenny Allen. Uh, her 2nd. and her husband are big show watchers. Uh, her husband's Brandon Allen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Filthy Power is his mm -hmm. uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. The guy benches, I think, like 600 pounds. Yeah, pretty He's good. Pretty massive, yeah. Nice work. Very nice work. We are very happy to have <laughs> you on our side. Uh, You'll show up when, when we need you, right, for the yeah. fight? <laughs> yeah, we'll need you for the fight, too. I need you to follow me around so I can talk shit to people in person. Uh, happy birthday to Matt on April 6th. He and his wife, uh, Janine, watch on separate phones, and they pretend they didn't, and then they watch it together later. So I'm getting three views out of two people. That's juiced. Yeah. And they also um, just had a four-year-old, or they have a four-year-old baby. And the baby <laughs> and the baby cries when I talk, but not when, when Richard Rapway talks. Interesting. So I'm a baby soother. Thank yeah. you. Happy six-year anniversary to Lauren and Jake on April 5th. Six years. And their boyfriend and girlfriend. What to, wrap Jake. it up, Jake. Wrap it up. It's time, Jake. Go ahead, Jake. Just pull it. Jake, pull the trigger. You know yeah. you got a good one. You're Go done. get a ring. Go get a ring. Go do it. She'll be happy with whatever. It's time to pull the trigger. Yep. Happy birthday to Adam Ryman, uh, OG fucking supporter. Love you, dog. That's Thank an easy you, one. Um, and then happy birthday to Jeff Brown. That was on March 24th, but we missed it. Uh, we're not going to forget you. Happy birthday, Jeff Brown. It's a good name. That is a good American name. Happy birthday to Jamie on April 7th. Um, she's the one who sent us all the Rob stuff, the AI Rob. Oh, that's stuff. a good. She's a top tier. She's then. great. She's constantly repping the show, constantly posting it to her story. Doesn't go unnoticed, Jamie. Thank you very much. We love you. I sent you a T-shirt. It's coming. It should be there now uh, or in the next few days. Happy birthday to Grace L., huge show watcher. March 30th was her birthday. It was last week. Uh, you are the best. We are big fans of yours, and we really appreciate you supporting. We noticed, Grace. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Palmer Wood. That's a good name, That's too. That's a good name, too, on uh, March 3rd. Uh, I almost said 36th. <laughs> but I knew that didn't make sense. There you go. You caught it. I got context clues. Uh, March 26th, he and his wife just had a baby on the 22nd, so a new subscriber just dropped. Nice. We're going to get more views now that that family of two is a family of three. Smart. It's exciting. And then this might be, this might be, this is 
the most important one. Uh oh. Happy 25th anniversary to Kendra and Bill. Kendra. You know Kendra. Of course. She's in the rat chat. She's a huge supporter of ours, constantly sending us little gifts and Venmo. She's sending Venmo to get my hair cut. I got my hair cut. There you go. Kendra. They botched it. Yeah, but... They botched my haircut a little bit. <laughs> oh, I had a straight yeah. guy cut my hair, so sorry, Kendra. Um, but Kendra uh, and her whole family are huge show watchers, constantly posting to their story, constantly supporting us in so many different ways. Uh, we love you. Thank you. Happy 25th anniversary to you and Bill. And they even left us a video of their of Kendra giving Bill their 25th anniversary card. Okay. Let's let it play. <laughs> Okay. Read it. You and your love make my life better in every way. Because words are just words until action actually starts and actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions. Because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Like us talks. The podcast rank the best new podcast of all time. <laughs> We're getting podcast bits in the <laughs> anniversary card. 25 year anniversary cards. That's how you know there are major show watchers and yeah. supporters. So yeah. we are very grateful. Kendra, you and Bill, congratulations on 25 years. You're a great couple. We had a little uh, drywall shout out here. Very mm -hmm. cool. Love John. to see it. We got someone uh, the watching. Guild clan. Yep. We got someone watching the show on a bullet train. Yeah, the Japanese bullet train gets that's our first our first rep there. So. Yeah, that's good. And then last but not least, we found an AI song from the for the show. No, we didn't find it. This was sent to me by Blake on Instagram. So Yeah, Richard found it. Blake yeah. sent it to him. Blake's very talented, made this cool AI song. So we're gonna play this out on uh, for our outro. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. 30 minute bonus land dropping now on fluckustalks.com. Come join us. Thank you for watching. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday. Words are just words in the lecture actually starts And actions speak louder than words But at the same time